The game of life and death. This is the part I enjoy. It becomes a race against all odds. How do we get out of there? It's impossible! It's impossible! It's... he enters a maze of high-tech adventure. Wait a second, no practice rounds? Didn't do you any good. No one's ever made it out of this room alive. Now, only one person can untangle the puzzle. Wallace Shawn, Sean Reese davies Brigitte Nielsen, Nicole Eggert, and Corey Haim star in The Double O Kid. Who says a little danger can't be a lot of fun? He saved my life. Hey, this is Matt once again. We're about to end the video. This is another page request this time for Dan. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested, requesting pretty much any type of videos, uh, topics, reactions, reviews, commentaries, whatever, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for the Corey Haim film, The Double Old Kid, from some say 1992, Wikipedia says 1993, but then IMDb says 1992. So, I don't know, maybe I'll just pick a year just because. But the cast, yeah, Corey Haim. You also have Brigitte Nielsen from Rocky IV and Cobra. You have Wallace Shawn. He's the guy in The Princess Bride. He's the villain with the, the poisons. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> Who our lead character Terry Elwes tricks with the poison. That's Wallace Shawn. Um, he's pretty much our main villain, and his Terry's name is Cash Pot. Maybe people were smoking pot making this film. John Reese Davies is in this for a little bit. Uh, Nicole Eddard. She's in this because at the time she was going out with Corey Haim, and they were in the film Blown Away. Around the same time. The movie is not good. It's very silly. It's very goofy. I mean. Do I hate. Did I hate the film? No. I, I gotta admit a part of that is because I'm a big Corey Haim fan. Uh, I miss the guy. I mean with him I grew up with stuff like this. Which, by the way, this still needs a Blu-ray. The first Watchers. Come on now. But I grew up with that and The Lost Boys and Stephen King's Silver Bullet. I really liked Corey Haim. I thought he had a lot of charm to him. Even in a silly, goofy, low-budget movie like this, I still think he had charm to him. And as it was going on, it, there's so many like ridiculous things. I mean... Before I get into the plot, let me just throw this random stuff at you. A bit where Corey Haim uses a super soaker and makes a little bit of a flamethrower. Brigitte Nielsen hires a bunch of hockey players to chase our lead through the streets. So, Corey Haim's chased by a hockey game. Ready to use him for a hockey puck, I guess. Wallace Shawn's villain has an arcade room. But it's like arcade, like there's a, a car and there's like a little spaceship, like those old arcade things. He uses that to kill people with. And how he kills them is, is weird and rather stupid and bizarre. Nicole Edgar, we first see her as a waitress on roller skates, and there's a point that she's roller skating down the street with a shopping cart. Why she's rolling down? Why you're roller skating down the street with a damn shopping shopping cart? I don't fucking know. With a sharpie and a shopping cart, I don't fucking know. The finale involves Wallace Shawn. For some reason, his arcade machines are connected to this computer. That he's using because he's been hired to inflict this computer virus in order for Corey Haim to hack and for the virus not to go to this plane that's supposed to be shot down or brought down, but back to the bad guys' lair. They're playing like this VR CG chess game that somehow by winning it, 
the computer virus and fetch the bad guy's computer instead. Like I said, this is a very bizarre, weird... Like, there's a bit where Brigitte Nielsen's in a jacuzzi with her dress on. Like, she's soaked in a jacuzzi with her dress on. I guess, a no nudity clause? I guess that's why? Then I'm thinking, then don't have a scene in jacuzzi. It just makes you look fucking weird. Plus, this doesn't seem like a movie that would have nudity in it. This seems like a movie made for kids. I mean, it's called The Double Old Kid. It, like, how goofy and silly it is. It's meant for kids. I mean, in the same vein as, like, Three Ninjas. Or Three Ninjas sequel. There you go. The Double Old Kid meets the Three Ninjas. Which is weird, because it starts out with Brigitte Nielsen, this other guy, as janitors. So if you want to see, you know, Brigitte Nielsen be a janitor. And these guards get killed. Like, the, the guy with Brigitte shoots them. Which, again, is weird for a movie that seems like a kid's film. And then the credits start, and the credits is this very antiquated, like, a computer chess game with uh, the cast coming up. I'm like, wow, this, this chess game, these people don't know how to play chess. Like, this is not how you play chess, but... I guess, it's like, this is meant to be Corey Haim, and these are meant to be the bad guys, and the bad guys, like, wipe out all the chess pieces. It's like this very VR, lawnmower man-style effects. Like, that type of computer effects, I should say. Like, lawnmower man-style. <laughs> or maybe that's an insult to lawnmower man. Oh yeah, Karen Black is in this as the mom. And then, five minutes, that mom character never comes back. <laughs> it's okay, it's Taryn Black. Okay, they just, she's just here for this little bit. Where, Corey Haim is sleeping, his little brother wakes him up, and the little brother has a water pistol that looks fucking real. I mean, I guess this is the time when water, water pistols really do look like sit shooters. Well, it looks like a real six shooter that you know Roger Murtar would have, but it's a water pistol. I'm like, wow, okay. It is before them changes happen with the water pistols. And then I guess Corey Haim lives next to his mom in different houses, or was it a garage and he lives above the garage? It may seem like the fucking rich. He works as an intern for the agency. It's just called the agency. Which I'm like, would this agency have interns? Wouldn't you be worried that any of these interns could steal your stuff? Or, I mean, do they have interns with the CIA? Do they have interns with the FBI? Like, could I just be an intern and walk around the FBI offices? Hey, I'm an intern. I walk around the FBI offices. Hopefully I'm not a spy. <laughs> would you have just an intern for the agency? This is why, like, why is, with the bad guys, why is Brigitte Nielsen in a jacuzzi with a dress on? She likes it that way, I don't know. So then John Rhys Davies, Sala, you know, Sala from Raiders of the, Raiders of the Lost Ark, he was in Indiana Jones' The Last Crusade. He's been in a lot of stuff, he was in Firewalker with Chuck Norris. He was in The Unnameable 2. He was in... Teen Solomon's Minds with Richard Chamberlain. He's been hired by people to talk to Wallace Shawn, who's this ha computer hacker. Indeed! You know. Actually, no, I don't think that's the word. It's been a while since I've seen The Princess Bride. God, what's the word he kept saying? And then Terry Ellis goes, I don't think you know what that word means. You know. No, I think it was uh, the other guy. Inigo Montoya. You tell my father prepare the I think he's the one who tell Walshon. I don't think you know what that word means. <laughs> Was it indubitably? I can't remember. It's been a while since I say it, so I apologize. I'm sure someone will write it down in the comments. But he wants John Rhys Davies to have a computer virus to take down these scientists that want to deal with these environmental reports. 
that could da damage these businesses. And those businesses hired John Reese Davies to talk to Wallace Shawn to again kill these scientists by taking down their plane in the Bermuda Triangle. It's not enough to take the plane down, it's got to be taken down in the Bermuda Triangle. And Wallace Shawn's going to have this untraceable computer virus. So in order to do this, they need some T cards. And Wallace Shawn has his arcade room. To me, the arcade room sucks because when you don't have Ninja Turtles, the arcade game, and you don't have Final Fight, and you don't have any of these other you know arcade games, then the arcade sucks ass. Because there's when I say arcade game, again, there's no like actual arcade games. It's just to me, it was a shitty looking arcade game. Arcade room, I should say. So he gets, he puts John Reese Davis in his car, and the car's driving, and there's a screen, and somehow when the screen hits something, but the car, it'll cut to John Reese Davies, and he's like woozy, or the front of the car's broken. But the thing is, like, the car never moves. Like, they were cheap enough in the budget that, you know, you would have the car move. And he's tied up, and the car's moving, and maybe it's the whiplash, and... No, the car never moves. So it's like, he's afraid he can't get out, but the car never moves. So how is he getting hurt? How is he being bounced around if the car, the ride never moves? And then when it hits something, then it cuts to the car, like, flipping over... And you tell there's no one inside. So a good minute, I'm like, so is John Reese davies dead? I didn't see anyone in there. Somehow it flipped over. And it was empty. <laughs> so it got flipped over, but there's no body. So then Corheem, the supervisor, sends him out to deliver this package. He does, when he gets there... Brigitte Nelson, this other guy, is talking with this other guy. And this other guy needs to get rid of this tea card, so he gives Corham a tip of money, and there's a tea card in it. Corham realizes, oh, must be a mistake, goes back in, hears gunshots, runs out, and the rest of the film is these bad guys chasing Corey Haim. And it's either this hotel, this, uh, hotel room f fight where Corey Haim uses mustard... Or this hockey player Dane is hired to chase down Corey Haim, which was weird. I did Nicole Eddard has ro rollerblades pushing a shopping cart. That's where the two of them meet. And she decides to follow him. And as is going, I'm like, what the fuck, man? It, it, it's a very goofy, silly movie. It's low budget. Uh, not much of it made sense. But it was short. And I liked some of the cast. Interesting to see Wallace Shawn play a bad guy again like in The Princess Bride. And have a, again, a, as a hacker named Cashpot. Corey Haim still has charm. Him and Nicole Edgar were a pair together. So you could tell there's a bit of chemistry there. It's not like Corey Haim gets to do a lot of fighting. and Like, if you want to see this done a lot better, where a guy gets put into... A younger guy gets put into spy stuff, If Lutz Could Kill with Richard Rico is much, much better than this. Like, go watch If Lutz Could Kill. That's the one where Richard Rico is with his college class. It's a vacation they're getting to uh, Europe. And then they mistake him. These people mistake him for the super spy, and he's not. So you have this regular college guy. Granted, Richard Rico was much older than that, but you know, it's the, it was that time period. And it's like him thrust into this spy business. Much more exciting action scenes, much bigger budget, much more of a fun movie. That that if Lister Kill did this a lot better, a lot more legitimate. Much more of a exciting finale with big action set pieces. That's an underrated film. I wish they had a Blu-ray if Let's Could Kill. Fun film. This is very, like it says, very, very cheap. 
like when he's, when they're chased by the hot dog, he does his thing. He has a little bit of super soaker, flamethrower. One thing leads to another. They get caught. And, like, Corey Haim is forced to play one of these arcade games, and in his hand is thrust a controller that looks like it's ready to control a model airplane. Or, like, a big, like, racetrack controller. And, like, you don't see a car. Like, that's his controller as he's tied to a chair to play this game. And then on the screen looks like a shitty Sega CD game. Which is funny, because Corey Haim was in a Sega CD game. I forget what it was called. But Torian was in a safety CD game. The, the, the game is like a guy dressed up as a mummy going through traps. And then it cuts to Corey Haim. And like the spike trap will kind of slowly come down to him and all this stuff. And I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Just really crappy stuff. Hey, sorry about that. There was something I needed to do real quick, but... I don't even know where was I. It was pretty much getting to the finale of the film where... I get it. it's Bailey Toy Haim hacked on this computer and then somehow this chess game results in if you try to follow any type of logic you're not, it's just silly, goofy, stupid stuff. But again, it was so like silly, stupid and quirky that was kinda like kinda interesting. Well no, that's a lie. It wasn't interesting. It was just bizarre. It was like so bizarre it made me wonder like what the hell was gonna happen next, like I said before. And then, like, the the other people worked with the agency gets there, and Corey Haim and the cool Edward walk out, and everything's safe. Wallace, Sean, Bridget Nielsen, you think they're going to do a raid with the chopper, but then somehow the computer also affects the chopper as well? So somehow the computer stuff actually affects the chopper, and it's going haywire, and it'll cut to, like, a bad computer graphic of a helicopter... Going around and crashing, so the movie can't even afford a real helicopter cr crash or stock footage of a helicopter crash. It just it by the computer model thing it crashes. Even when it crashes, it doesn't even blow up. It just boom, that's it. And then it does this thing that it kind of sums up the movie where the Cole Edgar and Corey Haim walk away. And then it cuts to the computer game and two chess pieces. And one leans on the other, like Nicole Edgar leans on Tori Haim and they go away from the, the frame of the camera. That right there kind of tells you what kind of movie this is. And what kind of movie it, it involves. It just, like I said, it's very silly, it's very goofy, it's not a good film. But I would say it wasn't a boring film. Because it did move at a decent pace. And that, yeah, there's enough weird, quirky, bizarre stuff that makes you wonder what's going to happen next. Uh, like I said, I think Corey Haim has a charm to him that carries even a movie like this. Brigitte Nielsen, she's there. I mean, she's doing what she's told to do. I've seen much worse. I've seen much better. Wallace Shawn, you can tell he's having a bit of fun being the villain in this. I mean, it's not a good movie, but it's not Three Ninjas a High Mega Mountain, High New Mega Mountain. It's not that bad, but it's not that good either. So it's like, I would never see this film again. Um, if it has a low rating, it deserves it, but at the same time, it's not Pocket Ninjas. <laughs> Like, you want to see bad films, go watch Potty Ninjas or Three Ninjas, High Noon and Mega Mountain or some of those kids' films. So, I don't even know what else to say. It tries to have, like, this 80s type of song at the end that I don't know if it quite works. Because this was, like, what, 92, 93? And I really wanted to hope that this song would be, like, a big hit. And here's the big song for the double kid. And yeah, it's low budget is definitely apparent. And again, it's weird that Karen Blatt, the mom, like, never pops up again. Like, you thought, okay, they're establishing her. Because we're going to see her later. No. John Reese davies I mean, he, I, he's only in this for, like, five minutes. So, it's okay. Guess, you know, maybe get a nice paycheck. <laughs> 
So, yeah, I don't want to say. But I guess even God himself said maybe it'll brighten your day if you watch this. But with that said, thanks for watching. Take care. Uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.